Okay, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I've got a current coach that I'm working with. Uh, we've got Coach Ibrahim, who is based all the way in Australia. Uh, Sydney, Australia, to be precise, correct? Yeah, that's the one. Perfect. So Ibrahim and I have been working together for, for a while, and I wanted to bring on, bring him on here um, for, for him to share his... Essentially, his journey working with myself and some of the changes that we've helped Ibrahim to make while working together. So before we get into it, uh, Ibrahim, tell us a little bit about your soccer training business and what your yep. company specializes in. Yep. Um, so I'm Ibrahim. Uh, my private football coaching business is Clinical Football. Um, it's based in Sydney. Um, and it specializes in private football training from players at the age of six onwards. So this is the bridging the gap between the player that plays for their club um, to getting those extra repetitions and getting that extra training for them to be success successful on any level that they play at. Fantastic. So to give us uh, more of an idea of like the size and how long you've been in business. Tell us, first of all, how long you've had the company for and how many sessions or clients are you currently working with on a weekly basis? Yeah, uh, so when I first started out would be in about 20, 2020, 2021, just um, so it was in the late, late months of 2020, then started going in full swing in 2021. Um, then and it started building from there. Um, it's mainly in terms of the players that I work with, could be anywhere between 30 to 50 players per week. Um, so in terms of it, it's about full-time hours. And then the 30 to, between the 30 to 50 players would be around one-on-one -on -one setups and small group setups of four to six players. Um, then that could be spanning other ages of six onwards. And so it's been growing significantly over the years since I uh, started out in 2021. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So for for the audience, tell us a little bit about what, what are a few things that you were struggling with before we started working together? Um, yeah, so... You reach a stage when you get you get quite comfortable, and then you want to try to get to that next level. You want to try and uh, maximize as much as you can. Um, it was this, the struggling part would have been at, at the start. I mean, before meeting yourself is some of those those small little things in between um, of ways you can build your clientele within the the spaces you want to build them in. Because um, with being flexible, you also want to um, start increasing your hours, whether you're, you're trying to link plays together and um, build your small groups a bit more. So that was sort of the struggling part because, you know, when you, you get to full capacity of one-on-one, -on -one, you want to start building out your groups. So that was sort of the, the challenges at the start. And then going about, you know, the social media sort of thing of how – people look at and what the parents are looking for out there so that was a sort of a struggle to see what the market is like then when i came to yourself i started to get a better understanding of how it works mm -hmm. fantastic and what what results have you have you seen and what what changes have you made since we've started working together one-on-one -on -one? Mm -hmm. um a lot of the a lot of the results i feel like they've come from where we had a bit of a session about the follow following up part of things from calls, texts, and you know the the further in following up, I feel that's helped me a lot in terms of gaining a lot of, gaining a lot of the the leads that have come through. Mm -hmm. um, also, the the, the trial off for trial off for um, technique has also been a very key factor for myself. And um, just maintaining a lot of the, the the stuff that we had in the, the earlier sessions from the communication with the parents and then instilling that option of bringing in a friend mm -hmm. has also worked as well. So, yeah. 
fantastic. Those are some of the techniques, yeah. Mm -hmm. So on average, how, how many new clients are you bringing in on a weekly basis now or are reaching out? How many contacts are you Yeah, bringing? so yeah, the good thing is um, on average, when I start, when, before it wasn't, it was between one or two. Now it's ramping to four to six new uh, inquiries and players coming in each week. Now and this week was eight, so which is really wow. good. So, yeah, it's starting to see that the traction is building and building. Fantastic. So, Ibrahim, where, where do you see clinical football going in the next or, – or where do you want to be with your business in the next three to five years? Um, well, definitely – in the next three to five years, I believe the academy programs and the, the term programs will be running consistently, which would be the forefront of um, building more consistency within young players coming through mm -hmm. that, and then um, solidifying the locations for that as well as that, that's what's in the works at the moment. So then that would then um, help drive through holiday camps and uh, things of that nature. So it would be the term programs, holiday camps would be the next point of call and then the online resources. So those will be the the goal in the three to five years ahead because mm -hmm. now the one-on-one -on -one has reached, reached its goal. So that will be the next avenue and then the YouTube um, channel being launched as well. So that's Fantastic. coming around the corner as well. Fantastic. So also another thing we've spoken about on, on previous sessions is charging more for your sessions. Um, yeah. So tell the coaches that are watching, because a lot of coaches mm -hmm. get kind of confused that they want to charge little because they think mm. that charging little is going to attract more people to their program. So you made a good point, I think it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, about the risks yeah. involved with charging uh, a, too little. So share, mm -hmm. share with us what what you said to me about charging charging low price for your training. Well, I believe with charging low price, um, especially for the ones that are inquiring, mm -hmm. sort of provides an element of doubt from the the consumer part of things why they it's like saying if you're going to buy a one-way ticket from london to sydney and it's at a low price that you've never heard of before you'll feel that there's some, some doubt and suspect in the validity of that it's a similar thing in, in the personal training world i mean the football training world where if it's at a low price they suspect that maybe the facilities is poor or the service of the quality of the service is poor so in that sense you want to tr you want to be um putting yourself that you provide the quality and they're paying for the quality hence why the price that you provide justifies that fantastic fantastic perfect so ibrahim if any coach because i i get I speak with a lot of coaches and a lot of coaches are on the fence of joining our program or, or getting my help. So what would you say to a coach that is on the fence, isn't sure about investing uh, to getting that help? What would you say to them if they haven't invested already or, or haven't got the help? I believe that um, being on the, being on the fence and I've, I've been in a lot of situations where I've been on the fence of, so, different ways to go, different ways to improve, different ways where um, you, you could see some sort of avenue for success. However, the best the best way possible is how specific to what being investing to being specific towards your goals is why aligned with you because it's very specific to the path where you want to be successful in private football training. Yeah. So once you know that it's very specific to your goals, it's only right to invest in that in that. Because at the end of the day, like when you're in the the industry itself, you learn you learn as you go, you learn and you you progress on the journey as its own. But then you sort of get a you got to seek on the play the, the people on the outside looking in where they can they've got different eyes of and a different view of where they can help you. 
Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest thing that I've saw growing with myself. You know, from 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 meeting yourself, you've got all those different insights. It's definitely helped and it's been worthwhile. So I do you think that's a one way you got to go is just invest, invest in your business. Yeah. Fantastic. Perfect. So any coach watching, Ibrahim, that wants to maybe follow your your business or wants yep. to contact you because they might have some doubts about our program, yep. what's the best way yep. they can get in contact with you? Well, the best way contact, um, you've got the uh, the Instagram page, which is clinical.football, where you can direct message me. I'm also available via email um, and through WhatsApp. Um, the link, the, the 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 descriptions are all in the the links mm-hmm. in the on on my bio, so it can go through that route. It can go through mainly the messages is the best thing, or via email. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, always looking to help up and coming coaches because I was like one of those ones at the start, you know, trying to find a way, and then you start you start building in your quality, and you start finding to link up with the best people that can help you. And that's the only right way to go about it. Perfect. 